Hi YouTube, this is Darkon633, you're back with another Star Wars review. Today we're going to take a look at the Star Wars 6-inch Black Series Guardians of Evil 4-Pack. Now this particular 4-Pack is actually exclusive to three stores. One is GameStop, another is ThinkGeek, and also Barnes & Noble. As of right now, it seems like they were going on a little sale for this pack of GameStop, and it's definitely worth the price when it's on sale, since the GameStop and ThinkGeek prices are higher than the standard MSRP overall. Anyways, in terms of overall contents of this particular box, you're not going to get a whole lot of difference between each of the figures, except for maybe the Elite Praetorian Guard if you don't actually have any of the Last Jedi Praetorian Guards, but all three of the other skulls are pretty much exactly the same outside of the few differences either by the color scheme, the overall armor design, and various other things. Anyways, we're going to take a look at the box first. The box is a little bit different than your typical Black Series design, and that's because it's technically four Black Series box fused together, although they do not have individual boxes inside. It's just one tray that has all four figures inside here, so you just get the idea. The names are printed for each of the particular characters, which is nice, and a bio on the back for each of them as well, so that's really cool that it actually has that. Now we're going to take a look at the figures individually. First, we're going to take a look at the Coruscant Senate Guard, which was the type of guards that predated the Empire. So, because of this, this is the first prequel-related character we've seen in a while. The last, if I remember correctly, was actually Qui-Gon Jinn. So there really isn't a whole lot of 6-inch figures for the prequel trilogy, which is unfortunate since they do have some pretty cool designs. But I can understand in a marketing perspective, everything from the original trilogy and the sequel trilogy, as it's called, probably sells better in the long run. Articulation-wise, you're going to get the same on all three of these figures, pretty much. The head is on a ball joint, but you're not going to get a whole lot of movement in the way that the head sculpt is designed. We're going to take the blaster out of his hand for a second and take a look at the design underneath. Looking underneath, you pretty much see the main designs of the Royal Guard pretty much still intact here. He even includes the smaller pistol as well. He has ball hinge is at the shoulders, ball hinged elbows, which are ratcheted. He does have swivels at the wrists, and he does actually have the outward and inner movement. He has fully jointed waist with a little bit of a crunch, but you're not going to get a whole lot there. He has fully jointed hips, swivels at the thighs, double joints at the knees, and fully jointed ankles. Looking at the guard more closely, even the hand sculpts are exactly the same for all three of these, so it's kind of weird because of the way that the hand sculpts are designed, it's kind of awkward, especially for the Senate Guard. You can place the rifle into attack position if you wish to. So you just slide it in. It doesn't really have any problems holding it, but it is interesting that all three of the hands are molded exactly the same. Since, in my opinion, I think they should have at least used a different molding design for this guard. But you pretty much get the idea that you can keep the gun in his hand. So we're just going to take this and put the rifle back in his hand and take a look at the next figure of the set. Next we're going to look at the Emperor's Royal Guard. Now since I already reviewed this, we're not going to look into this figure too deeply, but you pretty much get the idea it does have the same articulation points and style as the single card release that we've seen already in the 6-inch Black Series scale. He also includes the Blaster, like both the Coruscant Senate Guard and the Shadow Guard. But it is nice that you actually can pose this like you need to, and he does still maintain the high points of articulation. So you pretty much get the idea about this figure. The next figure is actually a very surprising release, since this is actually based on the Shadow Guards, or the Emperor Shadow Guards, as it says on the box. There were actually these style characters that appeared in both the books and the game for The Force Unleashed. Seeing as that game is no longer canon to the universe, I'm really surprised to see these kind of characters even get released. Although, obviously, it's a lot more easier to do since it is based on a Royal Guard design, rather than being a particular character within the expanded universe. Articulation is exactly the same we see with the other figures, so we're just going to quickly go through it. Before anything else, we're going to take out his weapon. It can be a little bit tricky 
to pull off, but we're just going to take this off here and take a look at the articulation points again. Same joints in the head, same joints at the shoulders, same joints at the elbows, same joints at the wrists, same joint at the waist, same joints at the hips, same joints and the thighs, double jointed knees. Blasters have a little bit of a hard time staying in their holsters for some reason, and fully jointed ankles. Speaking of the weapon, we're actually going to take a look at the pike weapon that he actually comes with. So this is actually something that the Shadow Guards used in the game and in the books. It's actually really cool, actually, because it is just a regular stick with a lightsaber blade actually emitting from the end. So it's actually really cool that we've seen this particular release in the 6-inch Black Series scale. This is a solid piece and do not split into separate components, but he can hold it normally like you've seen there. So it's really nice that we actually got this kind of figure being released. Now, we're going to take a look at the Elite Praetorian Guard. This makes the third variation of the Elite Praetorian Guard, which includes the double-sided blade, which can be split into two individual blades, similar to what we've seen with the three and two quarter inch, and also in the film. So that's really cool that we've seen this particular design be released in the six inch black series scale as well. Because of that, it is the third variant in terms of helmet sculpt, so that's really cool. Articulation wise, is exactly what we've seen with the Praetorians. Head is on a ball joint, although it does get kind of hindered due to the shoulder pads, which are on a separate joint, which move left and right. He does the same joints at the shoulders, Still has that really weird arm joint, which I'm still not used to, and I really don't understand how it works too well. Same joints at the wrists. Same joint at the waist with a lot more freedom compared to the Royal Guards. Same joints at the hips. Kind of sealed off joints on mine, but it does have the thigh joint there. Double joints at the knees, which are extremely tight in my copy. And fully jointed ankles. So, this is actually a very nice figure, even if you're not going to get a whole lot of difference outside of the weapons and the head sculpt. Anyways, we're actually going to bring a few more of the Black Series figures and take a little comparison between these releases. Now we got Emperor Palpatine out for display and the second Emperor's Royal Guard. And because of that, it does look really nice that I'm actually able to get a hold of another... Emperor's Royal Guard says, I didn't really see a purpose, in my opinion, to spend another $20 on this release, but this gave me a little bit more of a reason to get it, since it actually was included with brand new characters that were not released in the 6 Black Series scale so far. Because of the set only having one Shadow Guard, I can't exactly compare it with two Shadow Guards here, but you pretty much get the idea that you can actually use this for army building, so it's really nice that we actually got a hold of some of these releases. Next, we're actually going to take a look at the Elite Praetorian Guards together as well. And with this, now we have the three variations of the Elite Praetorian Guard side by side. For what I could tell in the film, there actually wasn't four variations of the Elite Praetorian Guards after all, and it looks like they doubled on one of them. So in reality, it still makes up the eight Praetorian Guards that are by Snoke's side, but it's not like they made four different variations of duplicates of others. It seems like they duplicated extra on another one of the versions. It just had a different weapon. So this is still a very nice set together overall. And I think it turned out really nice, even if the price is a little bit high on GameStop and ThinkGeek side originally. When I ordered this, there was actually a little sale going on. I'm not sure if it's actually still happening. So in that case, it's probably better off just checking out your Barnes & Noble stores. But because of that, it has been quite a hassle to actually track down this set. Since for a while, I just did not want to deal with GameStop's price until it finally went down on sale. So your best bet is to probably just wait on it for sale, since it seems like... Actual in-store locations are a little bit more of a hassle to actually find the set. It is still available on GameStop's website for what I can tell from the last time I checked. So that's probably unfortunately the best way you can actually get a hold of the set because it is one of their exclusives. So anyways, please comment, rate, and subscribe and check out Hero Club and Hero Taku. Also check out Turner Dark on 633 and don't forget to check down the other channels down below. Please check the little bell at the bottom of the screen in order to see my content go up as soon as possible. I'm back with more Star Wars reviews. For now, I'll be seeing you later, YouTube. Bye.